few weeks ago, well, probably about a month and a half ago, I, I got this article forwarded on my desk about how the military is trying to somehow genetically engineer soldiers to have night vision built into their eyes. And I was like, what are you talking about? So I started digging a little bit deeper into this and, you know, went to Google and Yahoo, and I found somebody who's absolutely fascinating, and, and we're having him on the show today. His name is Tom Horn. He's behind the Raiders News Network. Go to RaidersNewsUpdate.com. Absolutely fascinating stuff. I'm going to warn you right now, some of the things we're, we're about to talk about are so freaky and scary that you're going to wish it's not true, but unfortunately, my friends, it is. Tom, welcome to the show. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, Josh. Great to be on with you. Great to have you. Now, we're going to talk about something called transhumanism. So let's, let's basically start there, because when I was talking about having you on the show, most people didn't know what that is. What is transhumanism? Yeah, well, it's something most people are going to know uh, as we move into the very near future. But transhumanism is simply the term that is given to describe a growing uh, segment of our population. And this includes everything, by the way, from old hippies and geeks all the way up to members of the military, as you open the show by referring to or this segment by referring to, who believe that we now have it within our power to use uh, emerging fields of technology, especially those areas of new science and technology that are related to the genetics revolution, that we're going to use these to change mankind, to take us into the next step in our evolution. We're going to literally rewrite our genetic construct. And for those that might think that, you know, this is, uh, what, uh, a, a, a segment from Hard to Believe magazine, I mean, uh, this year's DARPA budget, the 2011 presidentially approved DARPA budget, has millions of dollars in it for editing our soldiers' DNA. It has millions of dollars in it for creating what's called biodesign, which is a new synthetic form of life, a militarized new form of life. In fact, they're so concerned about it that they want a, some kind of a genetic off switch put in it in case it escapes and turns on us. So things are changing very rapidly, and the bottom line is what we've done with genetically modified plants, what we've done with genetically modified and transgenic animals, the next step is humans. We are going to begin altering what it means to be a species in the next step in our evolution according to this scheme. Well, isn't there some sort of truth behind the fact when it comes to science, you can never put the genie back in the bottle? Because initially when I thought of this, I'm thinking, well, we'll just create some sort of legislation that says, you know, no messing with human, human DNA. But regardless of what we do, we're going to see this come to pass, aren't we? Yeah, oh, we, it, it, that's true because the science exists. In fact, by the way, what you have proposed has been proposed before, even by some members of the transhumanist community that think this could be an existential risk, that this genie is going to get so far out of the bottle that it could literally lead to an extinction-level event because we would be and are changing living biological organisms, plants, animals, humans, and, of course, bioweapons technology. Hillary Clinton this week talking about a new bioweapon that could uh, grow out of the, of the new gene sciences, that this could be a Pandora's box, a biological nightmare that could lead to an extinction level event. It could wipe out humanity. Professor F uh, Francis Fukuyama, for instance, from Stanford University, saying that this is the most dangerous science in the history of mankind uh, that could literally lead to the end of the world as we know it. But the problem is the science exists. And there have been efforts inside the United Nations. There have been uh, conversations inside of our own military think tanks here in the United States about you know, could we all come together as a peace-loving world and put a, a voluntary moratorium on this science? But what, you know, what our military think tanks understand, uh, the Brookings Institute is talking about this, the Jasons are talking about this. What they all understand is, even if you came together in the United Nations and came up with some you know, uh, uh, agreement that we're all going to restrict the development of this technology, not everybody would follow the rules. In fact, most of them, the most powerful countries, would clandestinely uh, develop the science anyway, just in case somebody else is doing it and try to use it to subjugate us on the battlefield. We've got to be ahead of this technology. That's what the Jasons are telling the Defense Department. It's what they're telling uh, the Pentagon. Uh, that uh, reference that you made a moment ago might have been to 
an article called $100 Genome, uh, Implications for the Department of Defense, or one of the other ones, by the way, that have come out recently from the Jasons saying that this is the next arms race, and it's coming much faster than most people are prepared for. In fact, the Jasons have advised the United States Department of Defense that they now have less than one year, and, and what's almost esoteric in their warning is that they've said they have no longer than December of 2012. I don't know if they got that from the Mayans <laughs> or what, but, uh, but after which all bets are off. We have to get ahead of this technology now. We have to develop it now or our potential enemies are going to. Now, I'd, I'd love to know what the Jasons know that we don't know about the advances mm -hmm. in this technology, but all anybody listening to this show has, has to do is just look at the world that you're living in now. Look at genetically modified crops. This is already out of the bottle. Uh, uh, and we're already, by the way, altering humans, too, at least at the embryonic level. In Britain, in the last year, there have been two babies that were born the genetic offspring of three parents. What they call designer children is already a reality. Uh, gene uh, manipulation at the embryonic level so that you can sex select and eye select and things like that of humans. Uh, but if we're seeing this just in the, you know today's uh, Wall Street Journal or whatever, imagine how far the military is advanced in this regard because they tend to run decades, 20, 30 years ahead of what the public knows. And if we have time during this broadcast, we can actually talk about what the Academy of Medical Sciences in Britain just published in their admission of how many tens of thousands of fully grown human-animal chimeras are already in existence in laboratories around the world. What? Okay, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> honestly, I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around what you just said. Not, not, not because it was advanced, because my mind just wants to say no, 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 no. There's no way that we're doing this. I, I, I want to believe that we were smart enough not to get this genie out of the bottle. What are we looking at? What are they doing? Okay, you, you talked a little bit about selecting eye color and, and selecting sex, and that should be an indicator, folks, that if, they, if it's that easy for your local doctor to do this, what are they doing in some lab in, in Nevada? What are we looking at? Because I read an article that kind of referenced what you were talking about, how in Britain there's 150 animal-slash-human hybrids. What are they trying to accomplish here? Give us, give us some examples of what they're trying to do with this technology. Yeah, well, that, that article that you're referring to, uh, that was a Mail Online article. It came out actually one day after the Academy of Medical Sciences in Britain admitted that human-animal chimera research is advancing so quickly that an international regulatory commission is needed now to oversee the creation. Now, they're talking about mature human-animal chimeras. We're not talking any longer about human-animal chimeras at the embryonic level. Most people are fairly familiar with that, stem cell sciences. The pharmaceutical industry has been funding 